All right, here with Dr. Jack Graham, pastor at Prestonwood Baptist Church. Uh, you were telling us recently that you've been there for 34 years, having moved there. 34 in uh, June, exactly. Yeah, so congratulations on such a, a great tenure there. Uh, for a few minutes we've got uh, with you, just want to talk a little bit about preaching and leadership and ministry and uh, let's just start with with the longevity question, being there for 34 years. Um, what, what does it take as a pastor to be somewhere for a long time? Now, I've been here at my church for 23 years and, and grateful for that, um, but, but I've got a long way to go before I catch you uh, at 34. Uh -huh. So what are some things it takes to be at one place for a long time and to flourish and, and thrive in that kind of a ministry? At, at the start, it's a mentality uh, that uh, that I have, that others have, that, uh, you know, I'm not pursuing a career and looking for the next thing, uh, the next call or the next job or the next church, but but truly to to uh, to hear from God and to get to a place where he has called us and then to to begin there and continue there with the intent of staying there. And so it's a mentality, I think. Uh, it's, it's not to say that, you know, I can't say that every church I pastored uh, in earlier in my ministry that I intended to stay there my entire life, 40, 50 years. But the mentality was I'm, I'm here till God moves me. And it's going to take a lot for God to move me. Truly, it's going to take the call of God to go somewhere else. So it's, it's, I had a wonderful pastor who was a model and a mentor to me, Fred Swank. He pastored the same church in Fort Worth, Texas, 43 years. And I just watched him as a young man and I was called out of the ministry and ordained there. I, I thought, you know, that's that's the best way to do it. Just It's what I saw. It's what I learned. And, and truly, it's been great because you get to see everybody grow up. I mean, I grew up uh, here in some way. I was 38 when I started here and I'm 72 now. And uh, I've learned a lot and grown a lot. And but I've seen our church and not just grow numerically, but, you know, now you're dedicating babies that I dedicated are now graduating from high school and getting married and, and, and having babies. And and, you know, the pastoral heart, I, I, I do believe that's probably the thing that, that you have to have to stay somewhere a long time. And that is truly have a shepherd's heart. And, you know, sometimes if you're maybe an evangelist, if you're turned in that way. Maybe you're more motivated to, you know, move to the next thing or do the next thing or the next opportunity. But if you have a pastoral heart, uh, your desire is going to be uh, to pastor the people and shepherd them forward. And yeah. so I, I think I don't know that I've ever, ever put it just like that. I've been asked the resilience question a right. lot of times. Sure. But I do think it ultimately it's a mentality. Yeah. It's the mentality that this that ministry is not achieved, it's received, as Paul said in Acts 20, 24. And, uh, and so when it's a stewardship, you take good care of it, you do it every day. And, uh, you know, I was telling your pastoral staff earlier, you know, I'm a baseball fan, Cal Ripken played 16 consecutive years, 2,600 and something games. And they asked him how he did it. He said, I just showed up every day. Yep. And in, in the sense, ministries like that, you just show up every day, do what God's called you to do and uh, leave the results to him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, when, when I was, when I moved here at this church, I was 27 and my desire, if the Lord would allow it, would be just to, this to be my, my life's calling. I, I served at the previous church for seven years as an associate pastor and, and loved it. The Lord called me here. And when the, when the Lord led me to be the, the senior pastor here, my hope was that this could just be my life's ministry. D didn't know if that's what the Lord had for me, but it was my hope and desire. And I love hearing men like you that talk about when 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 you're at the place where the Lord has you to to just, you know, stay there. If that's what the Lord has, you know, it's not his will for everybody to be in one place. We know that, but to not have wondering eyes and to just be faithful with what the Lord has for you. So that's that's such a great encouraging word. Now, I wonder if we could talk a minute about preaching. How, how has your preaching changed through the years? So you've been preaching the same congregation for 34 years. Is that right? 34 years. Uh, but as you said, you yourself, you've grown, you've changed. Um, sure. You've gone from being a 38-year-old to 72-year-old uh, leading the same people. 
So during that time, how has your preaching ministry changed, would you say, if it has? I, I would say not not so much. And, and, you know, I hope I'm a better preacher than I was 10 years ago, 10 months ago, as far as that goes. I, you're always, you know, I never feel like I've arrived in terms of being the preacher sure. that I want to be. So I don't want to suggest that, you know, in saying that my preaching hasn't changed that much, that I haven't worked on it because I work on it every week. Sure. Uh, but, the, but but what I do in the pulpit has not changed from my earliest days of being pastor of a part-time church on the weekend in Cross Plains, Texas, uh, to my earliest pastorates in Oklahoma and then Preston with these years. And that is uh, is to preach biblical series messages. And, and you know, if, if you stay connected to scripture, there's always more to preach, more to say. I, I find myself today uh, with a lot of confidence uh, in terms of, you know, I've been preparing a lot. You know, it, it's not the preaching act that's the most difficult thing. It's preparing to preach. Sure. And when you're preparing a long time, I mean, your lifetime is preparation. And so I, I would say in some ways, preparing is easier uh, today than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, just because uh, you know, I've got a, I've got a file system. I've got a, I've got a, uh, I've got a lot in my head and, and in my heart. And so in that sense, preparation is different. And I think spontaneity, I, I would say I've, I've moved from, I've never preached from a manuscript. I've uh, always preached what I call a sentence outline. I could take my notes of something and I have these notes from, you know, years back, something that I preached in pick a number 1995 so the notes that I preached are typed uh, at this point, and I could go back and pretty much preach that sermon exactly the way I did whenever I preached it before. So I, I do I do have notes that are for the sake of filing, but when I preach, I try to preach with spontaneity, and um, and so I'm not I'm not uh, for me I've tried manuscripts and and I look at people that do manuscripts and they do so well with it. I don't. Uh, and so it's better for me to have that spontaneity. And I think as I have aged uh, and you just get more and more uh, confident, if you will, in, in what you're saying and what you're preparing to say that um, that the preparation is different and the spontaneity perhaps is more. Um, so I would say I'm looser now. I'm, uh, I'm not as tied to maybe even what I prepared, but allowing the Holy Spirit to prompt me. I don't go way off track from what I prepared to preach. I don't. But I, I do think I'm a better preacher in the sense of is I've always had a natural ability to speak. And uh, I, so there was always that. But I think even today, more and more, there's just less angst, if you will, when I ride that pulpit uh, that I know by now that it's where I'm supposed to be. And I've been there for a lifetime. It's a great place. Yeah. Um, it's the greatest thing to do, you know, is to persuade people uh, to know and follow Christ. And I'm still doing that. And I, I read a book early on, Roy Fish uh, had us read it at seminary, the great uh, evangelism professor of Southwestern Seminary. It was written by Leighton Ford called The Christian Persuader. And it's about evangelism, but it's about the call of the pastor and the preacher, the evangelist to persuade. Mm -hmm. And um, so in that sense, that's always been uh, you're from it. You are master's seminary guy. You look at a guy like MacArthur. Uh, MacArthur's almost like an attorney. He's like a, a lawyer making a case and to persuade uh, the people to, to hear God's word and, and act in accordance. And so, you know, I, I believe, more and more uh, in, in, you know, I've always tried to persuade people to follow Christ, of course, to, for the first time to know Christ. I have a big part of evangelism in my preaching. It's all Jesus centered. I really do. I've learned a lot. I've, I've determined a long time ago that uh, as Spurgeon said, I would take my text from anywhere and take a beeline to the cross. Right. And so preach the gospel uh, throughout my preaching. So, my preaching hasn't changed that much. I'm still in biblical series. We're doing a series in the Gospels right now called Tell Me the Story of Jesus. Uh, I just finished Romans. 
Uh, and, and I don't do verse by verse. I do bigger passages uh, with points drive uh, built out of the passage, but it really hasn't changed. I learned to preach uh, uh, by taking a text and do explanation and illustration and application. And uh, then I would add invitation. You know, how, what's the response? And, and I'm still doing it the same way. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. When, when you think about the role of a, of a pastor of a church, particularly uh, one, the just the scope and magnitude where the Lord has you. Let's talk just a brief bit about leadership, because I certainly I think sometimes pastors get mixed up and they become a CEO instead of a shepherd, which I don't think we want to do. Uh, but there certainly Correct. is a, a role of leadership as a pastor, leadership with a staff, leadership with volunteers in a church. How how hard is the leadership role for you, just in, in terms of your giftedness, the, the magnitude of Preston Wood? What would you say about the role of being a good leader and and, and maybe some, some lessons from that that you've learned? Mm. Glad you noted that as pastors, our leadership substance and style is different than a CEO or the head of an organization. We are pastoral leaders. Mm -hmm. And so we take our cues from the pastoral epistles and how we're taught in scripture uh, to lead. And so not worldly systems, but uh, godly systems of leadership. And, but there are leadership principles that apply across the board. And so I've been quite a student of uh, leadership. I, I enjoy reading all the uh, the leadership books and have done that. Uh, I'm thinking about writing one myself someday. But, um, you know, the, the leadership, to me, leadership is ultimately always about uh, relationships. And you, you, you can't, you know, a shepherd leader, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. Mm -hmm. And while I don't know every member of our church for sure, uh, or the, their children's names, uh, like I used to when I was in smaller churches. But uh, to the best of my ability, I'm I'm leading with presence, and uh, I'm visible to our people, and I'm showing up at important events in the life of the church and the life of people. Uh, as a, as a pastoral leader, uh, I'm still making those calls. They, you know, I'm really grateful for the cell phone now. I still do pastoral calls. I don't visit the hospitals as much as I used to, but uh, I will uh, from time to time. But I'm, I'm just illustrating that, you know, if you're a leader in the church, if you're the pastor of the church, uh, your visibility, we're, we're not cloistered. We're not monks. You know, we all love preparing. You know, I don't know. People ask, are you an extrovert or an introvert? I think I'm somewhere in between. I mean, I enjoy time alone. I enjoy time in my library. But and, and I, I do try to, you know, as Dr. Criswell used to say, give your mornings to God, mm -hmm. but then give the rest of your day to your people and, right. and serving Lord through uh, the congregation and its ministry to, the, uh, to your people. And, and, you know, leadership is is love is 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 loving people. And if 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 you. You know, my pastor, I talk about him a lot. I learned so much from him. He used to say, he used to have a saying, let's see if I can remember. He says, some people use their people to build their ministries. Mm -hmm. Others build their people to build, to use their ministries, in other words. And, yeah. and, and there's a big difference. And so it's motivation, isn't it? It's, it's, it's mentality, back to that word. It's the mindset that we have that... Uh, we are not uh, performers. We're not professionals. We are preachers of the gospel. We are pastors of the church. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate you sharing a few minutes with us and thankful in God's providence uh, to be able to make a friendship with you in, in recent months. Absolutely. And, and uh, glad for the Lord's kindness in that. Pray that he would continue to bless you and your ministry there at Prestonwood. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you again soon. All right. Blessings to you.